Our farm grows an organic herb called golden seal. Golden seal is uh, naturally found up in forested areas. And so when we grow it down here in the valley, we have to add a lot of sawdust to the soil. It grows really well in high fiber soils. We use this manure spreader to spread the sawdust. And when I was using it last summer, on the last pass, the rear shaft broke. And since we were so busy at the time in the middle of summer, we decided to park it until this winter when we had more time to get it fixed up right. Well, I guess that time to get it fixed is now. There's a drag chain in the bottom of the manure spreader that drags the sawdust towards the rear where the spinner is. The shaft that drives this chain is what broke. There's a gearbox that goes on the end of it, and after looking at the gearbox, the gearbox is also shot. Inside, the gears were just about to be stripped, and the cost of a new gearbox was going to be much more than the whole manure spreader was worth. So we decided to switch over to a hydraulic drive system, which we thought would be more reliable and a little more affordable. I also needed to replace both shafts the front shaft was made of a lighter pipe material, which I don't think was meant to hold up to the heavier loads of sawdust that we put on it, and had been bent and caved in over time. So I headed into town and picked up the following parts. 62 number 60 roller chain sprocket 1 and 3 8 bore and matching 1 and 3 8 taper lock bushing. 2 bolt flange bearing 1 and 3 8 bore. 12 tooth number 60 roller chain sprocket 1 inch bore. Sort of hydraulic fittings. Number 60 heavy roller chain 1 and 3 8 bore. Take up bearing. Adjustable hydraulic full of valve control. 6 tooth T bar chain sprockets 1 and 3 8 bore. 1 quarter and 5 16 key stock. Short hydraulic hoses. Hydraulic motor. Long hydraulic hoses. And 2 inch and 3 8 diameter shaft with machine keyways. <sighs> Okay, so that actually took four or five trips into town and took a lot of planning. But once I had all the parts, I just jumped right in. I pulled the old bushings off and cleaned up the middle. I felt like the side of the spreader wasn't all that strong, so I decided to build new plates for the bearings to be attached to. That would uh, give it some more rigidity. After deciding how long the plate should be, I cut them in the bandsaw. And then I cleaned them up a little bit because this was some old metal I got at the scrapyard and had a coat of rust on them. After finding center, I could then measure out to the bolt holes and I center punched them and then I was ready to take them over to the drill press. One thing I like to do when I'm drilling multiple pieces is to clamp them together and then I know the holes will line up. I traced around the inside of the bearing with a sharpie and then I found an object that was a slightly bigger circle that would give the shaft some clearance to slide through. I then made quick work of the circle with the oxyacetylene torch. After a little edge cleanup, it was ready to go in the back of the spreader. It's always really important to grind the paint off whatever you're welding on. It just welds a lot nicer. Lucky for me, this manure spreader hasn't had manure in it in quite some time. This would be a much less fun project to work on if it had. After getting it welded, I grabbed the drill and drilled the rest of the way through the side of the manure spreader for the bearing bolt hole. And then I was ready for the shaft. I slid the sprockets on first.
And once it was positioned in the back, I could slide the bearings on from the outside. The bolts for the bearings had to go on from the inside because if the bolt stuck through on the inside, it would hit the chain and the sprockets. The chain has slats going between every tenth link or so, and so it's really important to get the sprockets spaced right. So I laid one of the slats between the sprockets, and then I could center them that distance apart in the bed. Once I knew where the sprockets needed to go, I can move them out of the way and place the key in the shaft and then slide the sprocket back over the top of the key. And then there's just a couple set screws that hold the sprocket in place on the shaft. After getting both the inside sprockets done, I moved on to the outer sprocket. Even though I got the slowest hydraulic motor I could, it still needed to be geared down quite a bit to allow the feeder chain to move as slow as it needed to. I settled on a five to one gear reduction. The sprocket on the motor is a 12 tooth and this sprocket that I'm putting on now is 60 tooth. I'm hoping that along with the adjustable flow control, I can get this rear shaft down to the 10 RPM I figure I need from the 100 RPM on the motor. There's a taper lock that slides onto the shaft and then the sprocket slides onto the taper lock and there are a couple set screws that go on the back of the sprocket that pull them together tightly and hold them in place. Definitely spun a lot better than it did with the old bushings. Hey buddy. Okay, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Okay, now that I got the back shaft done, I'm gonna start in on the front shaft. The front shaft needs to be adjustable. It needs to slide forward and back so it'll take out the slack and the chain. And so I picked up some take up bearings and they'll, they'll go right here and then it has these grooves in the top and bottom and I'll build a bracket that'll let it slide and lock it in place. Before I do that though, I gotta get this old shaft out of there. So that's what I'm working on right now. I decided the quickest way was to just cut it out with a torch. I had to be a little careful though because the bottom of the spreader is plywood and so I had to be careful not to catch anything on fire. I'd say that shaft's pretty well shot. I don't know how those are even moving. I can barely spin them. It's no wonder that back shaft broke like it did. The sidewall and this front corner piece of the shredder are bolted together and the bolts are in the way of the bracket that I was going to put on them. So I decided to weld these two pieces together and then I could take the bolts out. Sparks in the face feel great. Once the bolts were cut out, I came in and cleaned up the metal where the bracket was going to go. I'm 
trying to decide how long to make the brackets now. I uh, put the bearing as close to this end as I can, and then I think about four inches of travel will be enough. So let's get it up to here. And then probably cut it off back here. About a foot. I got all the pieces cut for the brackets for the bearings. Put the bearing here. And I'm gonna raise it up off the like the, this is the side of the manure spreader, it'll be raised up a little bit. And then these will be the sides. And I cut these pieces that fit in the side of the grooves here. This channel here is 7 16 which is kind of an odd size for metal. I don't even know if they make a thickness like that size. So I had to cut, cut it to the right size and I'll weld a couple of them together to work. And then the track will be welded to the side of the angle here. And there's not much room for clearance on the sides, so I have to weld it from the back side. I drilled some holes here and I'll weld right through there. If I weld it on the front, the weld will get in the way of the bearing as it slides. So the track, and that presses there. Same on the other side. Then there'll be a piece for the bottom. Oops, up there. And a heavy piece for the top. This piece has to be heavy because I'm going to drill a hole in it and then the bolt will go through it and that's how you adjust the bearings that slides forward and back. So it'll go something like that. I'm going to take a little time to clamp it down the table and make sure I got it everything square and like I want. Then I'll come back in and weld it. I'm working on the track first. Got this piece here. I'll clamp it down. And then I found a piece of three quarter inch square bar that's really close to the right height. And I'm using it to space them all, all the pieces of track up so they're all the same. And then welding the holes on the back side. I have to be careful to get this the right way because this metal is 3 8 thick, but I need the wider way, the way I cut it, which is 7 16 I have to be careful when I'm putting it on there to get it on the right way. My plug welds in the back. It stays nice and clean on the front. Okay, got them spaced like I want, so I'll slide. And I got the top square at the bottom, so I know they're both going to be flat right here. Um, so now I can go ahead and weld the top, top and bottom pieces on. The last thing I had to do on these brackets was to screw in some threaded shaft into the nuts. The shaft will move the bearing back and forth and then once I get the tension that I want I can lock the bearing in place with the nuts at the bottom. I wanted to start with the bearing as loose as it would go so I spun it all the way to the end. The old front shaft was only an inch in diameter. The new shaft I'm putting in is inches 3 8 the same as the rear one. So I had to cut the opening in the front a little bit bigger. I cut a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom so the center would stay in the same spot. And then the bracket was ready to go on. I just did my best to center the bearing on the hole and I cheated it back as far as it would go and then tacked it in place.
Once I got both brackets welded in place, it was ready for the shaft. I slid it in one end, and then I slid on the sprocket. Slid it the rest of the way across, and slid on the second sprocket, and then I could slide it through the bearing on the outside. I locked down the sprockets with the set screws once I knew the distance they needed to be apart. And then I was ready to reconnect the feed chain, which is kind of an exciting step. That meant I was making some progress. I fed this front end of the chain up and over the sprocket, and then on the back side I did the same. But I quickly learned that it was going to be a pretty tight fit, and I was having trouble getting enough slack to reconnect the chain. So what I decided to try was to grab a tie down strap and I could loop it around two of the slats and then ratchet them together. And this held it in place nice and tight so I could reconnect the chain. It turned surprisingly easy. I gave it quite a few rotations to move all the slack in the chain to the rear, and then I could adjust the front bearing. I still wanted a little bit of slack in the chain, but most of it should be taken out. I was pretty happy with that, so I Tighten down the nut so the bearing would stay locked in place. And I was ready to move on to mounting the motor and plumbing in the hydraulics. Thanks for watching.